Welcome to the start of self-isolation slash April Owls readathon slash April. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. Um, I don't really know how much footage I'll be able to get. Usually I only like vlogging when exciting things are happening and that's just not it. I don't have a job at the moment, so that's rough. Um, obviously, like most of the country, um, I'm in self-isolation, so can't really go anywhere, so that's a wash too, but figured I would try and vlog, um, just because especially I like vlogging readathons when I can, um, commit <laughs> to actually vlogging all the way through. So these will be weekly vlogs, um, until the end of April and the end of the readathon. Um, not only am I going to be doing like the book reviews and the book stuff for the magical readathon, um, but just to be honest, I only have four books for that and that's probably all the reading I'll be able to get done this month. Um, just because last month was not a great reading month for me and I anticipate it's not gonna go well <laughs> this month either just because I've been really into like really books are a different sort of escape than video games for me and I've definitely been more of a video gaming mood like Animal Crossing and Pokemon and all that good stuff. So not only will I be sharing like the books that I'm reading, the books that I recommend, also just kind of like the other things that I'm doing to keep myself mentally sane and also preoccupied during this time. Today, like any other day, I have nothing planned. Um, I need to start my TBR for the readathon. First things first, I figured I'm actually gonna try and get in like a home workout. I really don't like home workouts for a lot of reasons. Um, just like personal preference, if you only do them, that is great. I just don't normally, so this is gonna be a struggle. But I'm gonna try and do my home workout. We have to try and brave the store and pick up some groceries. We've actually been doing really good about not having to go anywhere. And we're actually getting a lot of our food delivered by a local business who they normally do like catering and stuff like that. And, um, they are doing like a meal delivery so we're getting a lot of food through there but obviously that's more expensive than just buying food and you can't get everything through there so we're gonna have to go and pick up some essentials and i am very nervous about that it just makes me nervous because i'm careful i just not everyone is so that's the worst thing about going to the store but i'm going to get a workout in and then i'll check back in with you guys productive day actually I'm pretty proud of it I, I think that's one of like my major things during this whole self-isolation thing is that I'm very worried that I'm not gonna be able to be as productive as I'd like to be even though that's definitely not something you should be worrying about um I mean this is so unprecedented I think we should all just be worrying about surviving and not thriving if we can do both that's great but I think my fiance and I have kind of worked out a system um, that's gonna work for us and you know, maybe you're not as extreme as this. Maybe this will help you. Maybe this won't This is just what we're going to try and do um, is yesterday. We really didn't do anything um, traditionally productive like we made meals we took care of our dog um, We did work out but other than that we really just hung out and did like we just played video games all day and that was all well and great, um, but I don't see myself being able to do that sustainably for a month and not go completely stir crazy. So what we're gonna do is like do one day on and one day off in terms of like chores and productivity and all that. So today we actually um, went to the store and stocked up again. So we should be good for um, about like three weeks. Um, we're hoping to stretch it out as long as we possibly can in between um, trips to the store obviously. And then we just kind of did a bunch of things that like, I feel like we always procrastinate. I also organized our pantry and our cupboards and our fridge and freezer space to maximize places to put things in. And also just to kind of really see what we had and organize everything. So it's really easy to grab and um, we don't really have to worry about what we have. I mean, of course we did some fun things as well. Um, we're actually rewatching all of the X-Men movies. Earlier on, like at the very start of all this craziness, we actually watched all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. So that was really fun. Um, and 
we love movie marathons so we're, we'll probably do a couple more of those we've never done an x-men one before for a lot of reasons um it's a very love-hate relationship with me in the x-men movies it's definitely i think my favorite concept of marvels um just the movies aren't that great um so we've seen the first two of like the original x-men trilogy um we're trying to find a way to find the third one and watch it for free ideally because it wasn't that great so like we don't want to pay for it or like pay a large amount for it and normally we'd go to like half price books or something to try and find like a used copy but obviously can't do that anymore um so we skipped that one and then we watched x-men origins wolverine which actually had a lot of really good things about it more than i can remember at least i forget what we're gonna watch tomorrow because honestly they're all a blur and just in terms of like timeline and everything it's just a mess in those movies but um so yeah, we watched one of those and I did play some Animal Crossing as well. I haven't started any books for the Owl's Magical Readathon. I am reading this. I did pick this up today and this has like a very cream cover so it could work for the prompt that has white on the cover. So this one, The Goodreads, I think in like 20, 2018 for best nonfiction book and it's about dinosaurs. Um, and I've really just been trying to kind of engage my brain even on the days where I'm not doing anything all day and this is a really delightful nonfiction book if you were a 90s kid and loved dinosaurs perfect read hopefully tomorrow i will start a book on my tbr for april because there are only four books on it so i think i'm going to wrap up it's 10 o'clock unwind for the day um and i'll check back in with you guys tomorrow <laughs> Tuesday. Um, today I think has been the worst day of quarantine, self-isolation so far, because it is gorgeous outside. Normally I'd spend this day like going to a park or you know something outside doing something fun um, and obviously can't really do that. I mean I know there are a number of parks and trails and stuff like that open but this is the most beautiful day in a while so i feel like a lot of people are going to be there so i have actually gotten some reading done today and it's been on the owls tbr so <laughs> we're doing good today um i'm halfway through the great gatsby um i'm not reading it physically i'm listening to the audiobook i just needed a prop so i could do less editing it is truly the most perfect read that i could have chosen i think right now it is just so beautiful this writing is it's wonderful and I'm really glad that I was forced to read it in high school because definitely classics are not really my thing. Um, high school really burnt me out for reading a lot of classic books. I'm trying to get out of that. I am very glad that I did actually read this one because it's wonderful. There are some like small things that make this book a product of its time that are like kind of uncomfy that you can just kind of gloss over. but. I just I don't know what it is about this book that I love so much but I think the writing is just so beautiful and decadent and most of the characters in this are just <laughs> terrible people but there's just something so wonderful about the way that they're written about and just the writing itself I feel like really captures the materialistic age of the 20s in such a glorious way. If you haven't read it I highly recommend that you do. The adaptation also is pretty fantastic as well. The writing, I've just been so swept up in it. I'm probably going to cry at the end. If you've read this before, you know it doesn't end very well at all. I love it so much and I'm so glad that I decided to pick it up. The audiobook is wonderful. Jake Gyllenhaal does such a good job and I was a little bit nervous because some male narrators tend to have really annoying voices for women um and i was really worried about the choice that was going to be done with daisy but it's a really good audiobook production so if you have audible i do believe it is an audible original um definitely check it out also um one quick correction from my tbr video i misread one of the prompts so one of the prompts was to read a book that i thought started with an i um, it's actually an M. I don't know how I misinterpreted that, but I did. So I picked a different book. Um, I still want to read my choice, 
piece. It was If We Were Villains by Emil Rio. So I am still going to read that one, but to actually fulfill the prompt, I'm going to read another book. And for that one, I picked Monstrous, book one. It is a graphic novel and it's actually free on Hoopla. So hopefully, even though I added a, another book to my TBR for this month, it should be a fairly easy one to get through because graphic novels are, you know, that's the nature of the beast. They generally tend to be easier to get through than regular format books. So I'm gonna be adding this onto the TBR list. And that's really all for this update. Um, I am taking my time with Gatsby, but it is a short audiobook, so there's two more hours left. I'm hoping to finish that by the end of the day. And then, who knows, maybe start on another book. I'm almost done with The Poppy War 2. I've been reading that a little bit today. By the end of tonight, I'll be potentially almost done or done with two books. So I will check back in with you guys later on. Right now, I'm going to try and get the most out of this weather. It is simply beautiful outside right now. I feel like the world is kind of taunting us for not being able to go outside and enjoy it, but I am, I don't know, I might try and work out in like my little backyard enclosed area or take my dog on a walk or something because it's, it's gorgeous. So I also might order some hair dye too, because of course I picked like a very high maintenance hairstyle to try out right before all of this stuff started. Um, my hair is, you know, Normally I just dye it one bright color, but I did like kind of a pink to a purple and the pink actually has just lost color so fast. It's like been the color that's not stayed in my hair the most and I've had pink before. This was just a different color of pink. Um, so I might have to touch up my hair too because I'm looking very blonde on top, which um, it's not my jam. I like more colorful things. So I might order some hair dye too and do like a brighter pink on top or maybe just go all purple because that would be a whole lot easier to maintain during all this. So I'll catch you guys in the next clip. because um, I've been cramping like a mother. So I've been taking it very, very easy, but I did actually finish the Poppy War. Um, this is incredible. I am so glad that when I bought this one, I bought the Dragon Republic because I had a feeling that I was going to love this. And I think the third book comes out sometime this year. So hopefully that it still does because this one, I need to pick up the Dragon Republic, but I might wait until it's closer, until the third book comes out. Because I believe from what I've heard, The Dragon Republic ends on like a really big cliffhanger. So even though I want to immediately pick up the next book, I might wait until I can like read books two and three closer together. But this is really wonderful. I will say that this had been marketed as like a book where the main character gets into an esteemed school and she is training for war. That does happen, but I would say it's not even like a third of the book where she's in that school setting. So if you're going into it because of that, I wouldn't pick it up just for that reason alone because it was um, ultimately a very small part of this book, um, like that school setting that Rin, the main character, is in. The rest of it is very much just dealing with a war and it gets very dark. It is a very dark book. There are some very hard passages to read in here. Um, so major trigger warnings. I mean, this is heavily influenced by some real life events, including the rape of Nanjing and that it's awful stuff to read about. So just trigger warnings in here for graphic violence. And um, just keep that in mind when you're reading it. This is a very dark 
book. Uh, nothing really good happens in it. It is um, starting a war in this country and it is the realities of war and Rin um, fighting in a war for the first time immediately upon graduation of that school she does go and fight no more so that's kind of what it's going off of i actually really enjoyed the tonal change in this book from the school setting which i thought was a little bit slower paced to the other setting that was the actual war and the strategy and all of that it is a little bit jarring there's some kind of jarring time jumps in here that um are kind of like thrown in a paragraph you have to be like wait a year's passed and i didn't know that so keep that in mind. But with all that being said, I absolutely loved it. Rin as a character is very easy to hate. She's not likable at all and very morally gray, but I can't help but love her. I love reading about characters like that. And if you do like reading about unlikable characters, she's a very likable, unlikable character. I mean, I'm just going to use this as an example because like I mentioned earlier in the vlog, I've been re-watching all the X-Men movies, but lots of parts of this do kind of remind me of the Brotherhood of Mutants and like Magneto and all of that. Like you can see intentions for every single character even when Ren makes these decisions that you know are not good and that you know are going to lead to nothing but bad consequences. You totally get her mindset and where she's coming from. So I'm very excited to see what happens next in the series and I am looking forward to the next one. Again I will have to double check and see um, when the third book comes out because I'm going to try and space them along a little bit. And I also have more books to pick up for the Owls Readathon. I could count this as um, white in the cover. I started it last month. Um, I only gotten like 100 pages in. I don't remember um, where I was, but I mean, I wasn't more than halfway through the book. So I could count this. I'm going to try to not count it and read another book with a white cover. Um, and the Dragon Republic's really tempting for that one, but we'll see. So technically it's one of the Owl's Challenges done, but I am going to try and read a little bit more today. It was such an incredible book. It really has made me want to pick up another one and I've just been feeling so down today um, and just really been cramping and wanting to stay in bed all day. So I'll probably pick up another book. I have nothing else to do. Yeah, I'm not feeling the best. So I think this is going to be the only update that I am going to have for today. So I will check back in with you guys tomorrow um, and we'll see what I pick up to read next. Good morning, guys. Happy Thursday. I'm feeling a whole lot better today, thankfully. So I think... What I'm going to do today is be super productive. Um, I just kind of got it in my head to reorganize my bookshelves. So I already did one and I'm going to, I think, move the other one in our bedroom. Um, I have like three small little bookshelves at the moment. Um, I have one that has my Stephen King collection and then like my favorite fantasies on it. I have one that has pretty much all the rest of my red books that I have in my collection. And then one that I have for my unread books as well as just some like assorted games and stuff like that that we don't play that often. So I think I'm gonna reorganize them, move my other red bookshelf into my room, and then in our office area have that third bookshelf. So also a while ago we went through like our clothes and stuff for things to donate and we kind of just have them sitting in piles on our floor. So we have nothing but time right now so I'm also going to bag those up and not really too sure if anywhere is like taking donations right now in terms of clothing, but just to have them all bagged up and ready to go when those things are accepting donations again. That's going to be the goals of today. I'm going to either put on like a podcast or an audiobook and then kind of get going. <laughs>
lot more productive than I thought I was going to be today. Um, it's been a while since we last chatted. I was initially going to just do a couple of things. Um, I just wanted to do like a dust down of all the surfaces in our bedroom today. That was the only sort of task that I had planned. And then, man, I just, the time really got away from me. And I think I checked in when I realized that it was going to be a bigger project than what I originally thought. Um, I think I started talking to you guys today right before I started moving around on my bookshelves and everything. So I basically redid pretty much every single aspect of our upstairs. We have two rooms. Well, I mean, we have a bathroom too, but we have three rooms in our upstairs of our townhome. And I really did a lot with them. This bookshelf used to be in our office space. I moved it into our room. Um, I kind of reorganized a little bit and reorganized my bookshelf that was already in this room. Now the only bookshelf that I have in our second bedroom slash study is my TBR shelf, which I really enjoy. I am toying around with doing maybe a little bookshelf tour depending on, I might put it in here, I might put it in a separate video. The only issue with that is um, my bookshelves are definitely not where I want them to be at all. And none of my bookshelves are in like the same area just because like this bookshelf was in my childhood bedroom. It's actually a shelf that my grandpa made my mom. So um, its dimensions are its own and it's a half bookshelf. Um, so it's got just like three shelves, but obviously you can't make it in a set. And now the TBR bookshelf was from my fiance, his um, childhood bookshelf or at least one he's had with him for a while. That's something we're using. And then the black one is actually the only one that I've bought like as an adult, which I, yeah, which I really enjoy. I just got it from Target and I definitely in the future want to have just bookshelves that are matching and um, like in our study area, just like a whole wall of bookshelves would be really nice um, and cohesive. I'd like them all to be the same look, except obviously I'm going to be keeping this one forever just because it's, I mean, my grandpa made this for me. So I'm obviously going to keep this one around forever, but I would like the rest of my bookshelves to match. That's obviously going to take a lot of money <laughs> though. Um, there's no way around that. So for right now, all we have is three small non-matching bookshelves and that's just what it's going to be. So I don't really know if I want to film a bookshelf tour just because a lot of my books are kind of organized by just being able to fit them all in a space and not necessarily like how I would style my collection um, when I finally do have like a large area to have them all in the same place. So um, that's that's that for right now. Yeah, I did get some reading done today. I read a lot of the audiobook um, Smoke Gets in Your Eyes from Caitlin Dougherty. Um, that was one that I'm reading for the Owls Readathon. So um, I think I'm about a fourth of the way through that right now and it is a lot lighter than I was anticipating it was going to be. Caitlin is Ask a Mortician on YouTube. So if you've seen her channel before, um, she does bring like a certain light and humor to darker subjects. So I am really appreciating that. It does deal with some rough stuff. I mean, she is a mortician. Um, she does work with dead bodies. So that's definitely not something I'd recommend to anyone, nor is it like a lighthearted read. So I read a little bit of that today and then put it down. And then I mostly was listening to like podcasts and music when I was doing all of this stuff. So, so yeah, that's where I'm going to leave you for tonight. Um, I actually did start another book that is not a part of the Owls Readathon because I'm so bad at TBRs, but um, I'm gonna try and sneak it in somewhere. But it's downstairs and I don't feel like getting it, so I will update you guys on that book tomorrow. But for now, I'm gonna close it off for the night and I will catch you tomorrow.
guys happy saturday so the vlog is getting a little bit long so i thought i'd just wrap it up talk about all the books that i read this week i actually ended up getting a lot of books read so i think my initial hypothesis was going to be that april was not going to be a very great reading month for me i guess subconsciously i decided to prove myself wrong cannot complain about that so i'm looking forward to this month and i'm actually i think i'm really on track knock on wood that i feel like i am going to finish the owl's magical readathon and i'm going to be a magic zoologist. That's my career. I am also doing the Animagus training um, for the extra credits that adds two more prompts on. So yeah, I have my bullet journal here. I'm just going to go through all of the prompts that I've completed because I think everything that I've read this month has actually been for the Magical Readathon. So first prompt is Care of Magical Creatures and that's read a book that has an animal that has a beak on the cover. And for that one, I'm reading Crown of Feathers by Nikki Pau Preto. I have started this one. I am reading it on audiobook. Um, I have only read about like two chapters of it, so I really can't speak on it. I'm enjoying it so far. Um, the introduction is definitely good. It has me curious about the lore and everything going on in the story. So we'll just have to see more next week what happens with Crown of Feathers. Can't really give too much more feedback on it though, since I am not very far into it at all. The next prompt is Charms and that is read a book with white on the cover. So I actually did two separate books for this one because um, my initial one is kind of off-white and then the other one is actually white, but I started it last month. So um, the first one is Smoke Gets in Your Eyes by Caitlin Dougherty and I actually finished this book yesterday. I listened to it on audiobook. I did really enjoy it. This is her autobiography and she is a mortician and kind of going through her journey in becoming a mortician and learning about the death industry uh, and the burial industry in the United States. I have read another book by her before and I think I prefer that one just a little bit better and this was her first book so I think you can definitely tell between this one and the last one I read From Here to Eternity um, how much her writing has improved from now until that one so I did still really enjoy this one. I thought it was really interesting and she's such a humorous person that it was like a dark topic. I know I talked about earlier that I was worried that it might be too dark of a read during this time because I am reading as a form of escapism but she was so engaging I didn't really have a problem with that um, and she talks about it in a very respectful but entertaining manner so it's not like a very depressing read. So that was one of them. Depending on the edition it's very off-white. I thought it was white and then when I was looking up um, physical copies of the book like the cover it looks more cream. So I have a second one for that prompt and that is Poppy War by R.F. Kuang. I talked about this one in depth earlier on in this vlog but I absolutely love this. This is one of my new favorite fantasy series and I'm so excited to start the next book, The Dragon Republic. The third book comes out this November so I'm trying to space out the books a little bit more because I've heard the second one really ends um, in a place where you want to pick up the third one immediately. So I'm going to be reading the second book a lot closer to November but this was absolutely wonderful. It is a very dark fantasy, a very war-centric fantasy but very much the mythology and kind of like the powers that all the characters have is unlike anything I've read before. So highly recommend this one if you are in the mood for kind of a darker fantasy with morally gray characters. The next prompt is Herbology and that is read a book whose title starts with an M. For that one I'm reading Monstrous Volume 1. I haven't started that yet. It's a graphic novel. Hoping to get to it next week. So that's on the docket for next week's vlog. The next prompt is potions and that is read a book that is under 150 pages. I read The Great Gatsby by F. Scott Fitzgerald. I absolutely adore this book. This is one of my very favorite classics. I just love the writing style and it's such like a rich writing style. Again, very unlikable characters so I do understand that is an issue people have with it. Um, you're not really supposed to identify or sympathize with any of the main characters but it's just such a wonderful look at the 20s and some of the things going on during those times. The writing's really beautiful. It is a classic that I think pretty much holds up just as something that is enjoyable to read um, as well as something that can be studied. So I read this one as an audiobook. Jake Gyllenhaal does an absolute amazing job. So if you do have Audible, I highly recommend this audiobook production. It's really great. Although I have obviously, since I did read it for school, I have read it just in the regular version. It is, I feel like, a very easily accessible classic. So if you're looking to dive into some, that would be a good one to start with. Now for the Animagus training, um, I only actually need to add two more prompts. At least that's my understanding. Um, with what I already have as a magic zoologist. So the first prompt that I need to read for that 
is arithmacy and that is read something that's outside your genres that you normally read. And for me, my typical genres are fantasy, sci-fi, horror, and thrillers. So um, I got something in book of the month that definitely called to me in a weird sort of way. I don't tend to read darker contemporary fiction, but I got this in book of the month and that is Valentine by Elizabeth Wetmore. And this is the story of a small town and it's in the 1970s, I believe, 1976. And it takes place in Odessa, Texas. It starts off with this young Latina girl getting brutally assaulted and um, an upcoming rape trial of her attacker who was a young white man who was heavily esteemed in the community and a good old boy. It follows five different women in this town of Odessa including the girl who was assaulted and kind of how this event spurs different events in their lives and spurs them to self-reflection and how it impacts them and just how patriarchy and the times and like the small town Texas landscape kind of impacts their womanhood. I wasn't planning on reading this one um, this soon after getting it. I did get it this week in book of the month. Um, I got it and it just, you know how you're reading things and maybe sometimes you're looking at your bookshelf and a book is just calling to you and you don't know why because this is definitely not in my comfort zone at all and I will say this is literary fiction too. Um, so it's written in a very experimental style. Um, the different points of view, some of them are in different tenses. One's in first person, some are in third person, one is in like a first person plural. So it is very experimental and then um, all of like the speech, there are no quotation marks. So it's a very experimental style. So all of that is not usually things that I dabble in, but I did really enjoy this. This is a debut book and it definitely doesn't read like a debut book. It is very character driven, not plot driven, even though there are like some events that it follows. Um, it's more character driven, it's kind of slower, and it is very depressing. There are a lot of things that happen in here that aren't resolved, and there are a lot of things um, that, you know, you kind of hope for an upward trajectory, even when it is talking about depressing subjects. And um, I feel like, at least I did, and I understand the point of this book, but I feel like a lot of people will come out of this feeling kind of let down because nothing really wonderful comes out of it. It's just a very hard book from beginning to end. So keep that in mind if you want to pick this up. Obviously, um, trigger warnings for domestic abuse, um, sexual assault. I believe that's it. They don't do graphic descriptions of any of that, but it does deal heavily with a rape trial. So keep that in mind if you want to pick this up. And then the last book is Transfiguration and that is read a book that has shape shifting. So this is a book that I've been wanting to read for such a long time and I'm so glad that I finally got like the opportunity to pick it up because I have a feeling this could be one of my favorite books of the year just depending um and that's gonna be Circe by Madeline Miller and this is about the um I don't believe she's called a goddess Circe let's see she's the daughter of a god and a goddess and um so I believe she's just like a sorceress um or a demigod something like that it's been a while since I read anything involving mythology so I'm excited to pick this up I've heard nothing but wonderful things about this and again, this is one where I'm only on like page 30, so I can't really talk too much about my feelings on this just yet, but I am really excited. So that's something that I am going to be reading next week as well. And that's all the books that I read this week. Already, if I'm just looking at the number of completed books that I read in April, because I did read some books before, well, not before they started the readathon, but before I started vlogging, I had read two books already that didn't count towards the Owl's Magical Readathon. And I've already completed like five books, six if you count The Poppy War, um, which I'm including in my last month's total. It's already been a really good month for reading. Um, I'm not surprised, and I am surprised. I mean, I have way more time on my hands, but at the same time, it just depends on my mental mood and whether or not I'm feeling up to reading, but so far, so good. Um, that's going to end out this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will be vlogging next week for the Owl's Magical Readathon. So if you haven't already, please subscribe for more content from me. I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye!